Hey everybody, Mark from Hilltopper Bikes here to show you how quick and easy and awesome it can be to take our brand new 2020 Hilltopper Sprinter kit and turn your bike into an electric bike. Uh, so first things first, I'll introduce all the little parts here. We've got uh, your Hilltopper wheel, um, the motor built in, all of our wheels are disc brake compatible and rim brake compatible. I'm sure that question will come up, but um, just know all of our wheels are compatible with pretty much any brake system that's out there. Uh, next, you got your charger in the little box here. You got the instruction manual. I'm not going to use that because I wrote the thing. We got the battery. This is the battery mount um, and the, the motor controller is built in. We got a couple screws here just in case you need them to mount this or to mount the, the mount. Um, and we got the throttle, a few zip ties for you. Um, as far as the installation process goes, you're not going to need any special skills or any special tools, really. Um, just some pretty basic stuff. You might need scissors later to trim some of the zip ties to get it aesthetically pleasing, but let's not worry about that for now. Uh, the biggest thing you're going to need is a wrench for the front wheel axle. It's a 19 millimeter, so if you have a 19 millimeter wrench, that's great. Otherwise, a trusty adjustable wrench is going to be perfect. Uh, from there, uh, you'll need a, probably a set of Allen wrenches, depending on your bike um, but the one thing you definitely need is a three millimeter allen wrench or hex key whatever you want to call it um, that's going to be for the throttle um, and then you'll need since it's going on the water bottle mount you'll need whatever tool re is required to get those bolts off of your bike the ones that we include are phillips head so if you don't have any bolts you don't need any obscure tools to do it. If you don't have Allen wrenches, they're super cheap. You can get them at the dollar store. Pretty much any, like even grocery stores have them. Uh, any hardware store. So if you don't have some, I would suggest maybe getting those the same day you purchase your kit so that uh, you have all the tools you need before you get to the installation process. So now, let's jump in. It's basically three core steps. First is, putting on the wheel. Basically, you just take your wheel off and put ours on. Super easy. Second is installing the throttle. Third is getting the, the uh, battery holder on the bike. After that, easy peasy. That's pretty much it. So, we'll start with the wheel here. Uh, it's really common for wheels to have a quick release. So, it's basically just a lever on one side and a little plastic screw on the other. You just flip that lever down, unscrew a bit, and drop your wheel out. And then we'll just balance it right here because we'll be able to use a kickstand or anything. Yeah, so this brake, this bike is a disc brake bike and it has this big meaty tire on it. Uh, we'll cover the disc brake and the tire installation if you do want to swap it out in another video. But since not everyone will need that, we're just going to run through the basic steps. So you grab your hilltopper wheel and um, there's all this hardware on it. It should be in the right order already, so don't worry about taking it off. Uh, the only thing you want to pull out of the way right now are these little rubber caps so you can access the nuts. Now the uh, the axle has, it's a round axle, but it has two flat sides that fit into the U shape here perfectly. So basically you want to line up those flat sides with the U shape at the end of your fork. That's called a dropout. Um, but yeah, so you'll just lift the bike, slide it right on here. You might need an extra hand or something just to get it lined up, but it's pretty easy as I struggle a bit. There we go, lined up, and drops right in. Then you'll just tighten your nuts down. Uh, so we'll grab our 
adjustable wrench, or like I said, if you have a 19 millimeter, that'll work great too. Um, but you wanna make sure that the wheel is set in there straight. So get it on here and just really press on it and make sure it's set nicely. Um, then you'll just tighten this down. Uh, you can go pretty snug with these. There's no risk of over tightening or anything like that. Um, better to have it nice and tight than risk it being loose at all and posing any sort of safety issue. Uh, if you're a torque wrench kind of guy, you'll want to get it to about 27 foot pounds, but for everyone else, that just means real snug. So, give it a little force there, you won't hurt it. That's all set. And you can put your little rubber cap back, make it nice and pretty. We'll jump up. Uh, so the next thing is going to be installing your throttle. And this can be a little tricky depending on your bike because the grips can be kind of a pain. Um, you should check for some screws on them. If you have screws like this one, it'll just slide right off. Sometimes they don't have screws and it can be really tight. So um, just give it the old elbow grease and you'll get it off. Uh, if you're really struggling, you can try and lift it a little bit with a small tool and get some rubbing alcohol underneath it. That'll lubricate it enough to be able to slide it off. I wouldn't recommend using anything else because it can leave a residue. So when you're putting the grip back on, it'll get slippery and not hold tight like it should. So the throttle is pretty cool. It can go on the right or the left side of the bike and you can have it positioned so you're pressing forward or you're pressing down. It's all up to your comfort, whatever fits your bike better. Uh, I like it on the left side, so slide it over here. Uh, and then you'll take the three millimeter Allen wrench I mentioned earlier, and just tighten that guy down. Um, but of course, you know, you can adjust it to whatever height on the placement is the most comfortable for you and whatever fits your bike the best. You might need to move over your shifter or your brake lever a little bit to get it to fit, but um, it's not a big deal. It's super easy. Usually there's only one screw. So now our throttle's on. I usually just tuck the cable with all these existing cables, and we'll come back to that in a minute. So the next thing we got is our battery mount that we'll install. Uh, on my bike, it uses a four millimeter Allen wrench to get these off. On your bike, it might be a little different. It might be a five or a three, but four is pretty common. Um, like I said, if your bike doesn't have these screws, we included some in the little baggie there and it just uses a Phillips head screwdriver. So super easy. Basically, you're just gonna wanna mount this right on your water bottle cage. Some people will like it on this side. Some people like it here, just whatever fits on your bike. Um, Usually, we'll recommend placing it as low as you can so that your battery weight is as low as possible to give you a nice low center of gravity. So you want to adjust this to however it fits on your bike. It has a couple different slots, so it can fit, you know, it can slide up or down, whatever makes it fit on your bike. Okay, so tighten that down. It's nice and snug. The next thing you have are these two cables. This big heavy one goes to the motor. The little tiny one, this orange guy, goes up to the throttle. Um, where you want these to go on your bike is kind of up to you, but we give you lots of zip ties so you can play with it. Um, usually I'll tuck it behind and try and run the cables up the frame like that. Um, okay, so plugging this in, it's very important that you don't damage it. There's super tiny pins in there, but it's really easy to avoid any damage. There's little arrows 
on both sides of the plug. If you line up those arrows, you'll be good to go. So line them up and just gives you a little pop, you're all set. The motor cable is a little bit different, has a slightly different plug style. We have this cap on here to keep it safe while you're shipping, you can toss that. Um, but it's the same thing. There's an arrow on the plug and an arrow on the plug. Line those up and give it a good push. And it'll be pretty snug. On the motor side, there's a little line that tells you how far to push it in. Um, so once that's plugged in, um, now we just need to zip tie some of the cables down so they're out of the way. And that's pretty much all. But I'll show you what we do. Um, usually I'll start by zip tying the cable to the fork of the motor cable. I don't do the lower half in case you get a flat or something and need to pull your, your wheel off. So just leave it one there. You can still unplug nicely, but this cable is out of the way. It won't get snagged on something. Then we'll get your uh, throttle cable and just kind of zip tie it down. Usually I'll zip tie the cables together um, so that they will hang out together and uh, run to the same place. You want to give it enough slack that you can fully turn the handlebars. If you give it too tight, you can damage the cables and potentially put yourself in a risky position where you can't actually turn your bike when you need to. So now I have a little bit of slack down here. What you do with that is kind of up to you, but usually I'll kind of just fold it up and zip tie it to itself so it's out of the way. The zip ties that come with your kit will be a little bit longer than these ones. I have some kind of funny short ones. Um, so I'm putting two together to make this work. But that's pretty much it. That's the whole install. You take your battery, drop it in here, turn it on, and you're ready to roll.